Next on BYUSN, is the BYU football season salvageable at this point? Have we really come to this? And a stat from the month of October that has us shaking our head. Welcome to BYU Sports Nation on that lovely note. Presented by the BYU Sports <laughs> official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Hope your November's off to a great start. No last November? <laughs> no last November. That was a year so ago. Far. Hey, we'll have more on so that. So far, so good. That special run last year Go. coming up later in the show. I am Spencer Linton. He is Jerem Jordan. Welcome to November and a new month, Jerem. How was Halloween, by the way? It was great. Yeah? I got to trick-or-treat with my kids around the neighborhood, I think, for the first time in, I want to say, like four or five years. Nice. Typically, there's been a BYU sporting event of some sort that's last been was happening. On a Sunday. Right? Yeah, but Utah's weird, right? Utah is weird. You can say that again. Not as weird as Portland, but yeah. The Saturday before, I think we yeah, had... Yeah, Monday night. Monday night, it was last year. You didn't go on last year? No, Monday. Well, last was year that... on Sunday night? No, Utah did it on Monday, to your point. No, I did not. I, I, I'm not sure why. I think oh. I was traveling for some reason. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Regardless, didn't get to do that. You just chose not to go with your kids? No, <laughs> I didn't choose not to go with my kids. You're like, no. It was yesterday. I agree. You don't get a go. <laughs> I was thinking about how weird Halloween is. Just like, oh, just random people come up and ask for candy. Like, this is awesome. It's a fantastic Can we do that in the middle of tradition? May? Yes. Just like, hey, candy day. Just call it candy day. <laughs> Dress up in weird costumes and get free candy. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> the part about the kids is awesome. The rest of Halloween, not a, not a, not a huge fan. On today's show, we got a, a loaded show. ESPN's Trevor Maddich, David Nixon, help us discuss whether the football season is salvageable. Uh, BYU's leading TD catchers out for the year. We'll tell you who. The Marriott Center has a new capacity after some renovations. And does Jets head coach Robert Sala still have full faith in Zach Wilson? Mm. That and more will be answered today in headlines. And BYU football, we're on to Boise State, in the words of Bill Belichick. <laughs> Thanks, Bill. We're on to Boise. The rivalry game and last one for the foreseeable future featuring the Cougars and Broncos. It'll happen without BYU star freshman receiver Cody Epps. Head coach Kalani Satake spoke on the Epps injury situation yesterday. Cody Epps, his injury is season ending. Unfortunate. We we're hoping after getting some, you know, some uh, some information back and meeting with the doctors. Uh, but that, that's that's uh, that's that sucks because he's dealt with some injuries in the past and uh, but he's in high spirits I spoke with him and he he's excited to keep keep uh, his, you know his role as a leader on this team and and um, to keep working with us and so uh, I'm excited about his his energy and his approach to it I'm not excited that we don't get, get his production on the field oh, I hate that that's four season ending injuries for BYU football now Josh Larson Tavita Gagne Malik Moore and Cody Epps boo Sione Takitaki had 13 tackles last night. New career high by five. Before Sfoma won a sack and the Browns went over the Bengals. What happened to the Bengals? They were playing in their own nightmare in Cleveland. Not what happened level. is they went to the Super Bowl last oh year. Oh, my goodness. The next year sometimes just stay. Rough. BYU women's volleyball drops to number 18 in the latest ABCA coach. Oh, goal. no. Here's a random fun fact for the day. This breaks a streak of 136 straight polls or BYU has been at number 17 in the rankings or better. How dare they drop to number 18? How, how, when was the last time BYU was not ranked? 2013? Probably 13. Yeah. It's, it's 14. Been, it's they been went to almost the next a time. decade since BYU hasn't been ranked at all. It might have been 12? 11 or 12. Remarkable <laughs> run. Know. Remarkable. Cougars play at San Francisco on Thursday, by the way. Yes, they do. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. Presented by Bodyguards, protection for a life worth living. Learn more at Bodyguards.com. We asked the question off the top of the show. Let's go ahead and go back to it now. Is there any way that BYU football, after losing four straight games, falling to four and five on the season, can salvage the season, Jerem? No. Okay, coming up in the next... <laughs> <laughs> wow. No, they cannot salvage it. I, Nothing. I, I just don't believe that BYU could win four straight here and get to eight and five because if they got to eight and five we would certainly feel better and dare I say good after ending the season on a high note there right finishing the regular season with Boise State Utah Tech Stanford and TBD ESPN owned bowl game yes we would feel better but 
this team was too experienced and too good coming off of 11 and 1 and now 10 and 3 to for us to accept uh, happily 8 and 5, especially uh, the way that BYU has plummeted midseason. I don't think there is. Certainly, they can do things to improve and get better and and uh, have a nice end of the season and we'll feel better. But to salvage, you can't salvage a nine-win season anymore. Like nine was like, felt like, okay, if this team is pretty good, they'll get, they'll get 10. If, they, if they're, okay, if they're good but not great, they'll get nine. Then eight is like, eh. But I just don't, I don't even see BYU getting eight right now. The way BYU is playing, no. I, I see six or seven in the cards right now. It could be five. Like if BYU, at Boise State, it's a tough game. That's a tremendous defense. Tremendous defense. Offense, not so great. Stanford's a winnable game, it feels like. They don't even have the tree. Like, they're, they're depleted in that regard against Elder McKee there. Utah Tech's a win. So, uh, yeah, I just don't see how BYU somehow gets to eight. I'm talk- and that's the high end, Spence. Like, so even eight would not salvage no, the season for No, them. you can't salvage. The expectations were high for this group, and they should have been. That was, that was a fair uh, expectation. So, no, I don't think it's salvageable. As I so often do on this show, and because I love cars, I'm going to go to the world of automobiles. Yes, planes, trains, and automobiles, Jerem. More on trains, please. BYU at one point this year was cruising along the highway, freeway speeds, you know, top down, wind blowing through the hair. Everyone's feeling good. They're number 12 in the country after beating Baylor. So 2-0, and very early. And then they get in an accident up in Eugene. and That was a bad one. Everyone's okay, you know, per se. The car is okay. You come back to Provo and... You kind of, you know, limp through a couple of wins. You're still 4-1, and one, number 16. Car's performing adequately. It's okay, right? And then four straight losses have absolutely rolled this BYU automobile into a ditch and have made it immovable, right? You can't, like, there's nothing you do. You have to have that thing towed. And we've, we've entered a scenario where the car's never going to be the same. So in terms of, like, salvaging the car or the automobile back to where it was once was, no, that's never going to happen. This car this season will never be the same because what BYU has gone through. However, there are three terms. There's a rebuilt title, there's a salvage title, and then there's a total loss. The rebuilt title can still be insured, and it can still sell on a lot, right? It's still um, – It's something that a consumer could buy and be okay with, right? Not telling you to love it, just be okay with it, and you can still get it insured. That probably is going to take BYU winning seven or eight games, finishing with a winning record, right, to make it, like, palatable and not make you want to, like, throw up, (laughs) right? Yeah. Okay? Yeah. It's a rebuild rebuild title. It's never going to be the same car, so it's not going to be great, but it's like, oh, okay, yeah, okay, I still got my car, and it still kind of works, and I got the insurance back on it, so it's okay. Now, the salvage title is a little harder to sell because insurance companies are kind of weary of it, and it's like, ah, it, it was in a big accident. I don't know how good big I Big 12 about. insurance company still, <laughs> still taking BYU luckily. Yeah, if BYU finishes with six wins, that's kind of the salvage title scenario where it's not great and you're going to have a tough time like getting anybody to buy that product. And so some significant changes are going to be made. You probably have to get rid of that car and get another car. Okay? You're talking about a certain side of the ball? Read into that how you want to read into that, right? Like, I I anticipate regardless of what happens this year, there will be coaching changes. Okay. I'm not talking about the head coach. I'm talking about assistants. Then there's the The total loss. It just goes to the junkyard. And you just you like, you you tear that car apart and pull off the good pieces that still work, and you sell those individually. Okay? Okay? If BYU finishes the five wins, this season will be a total loss. I don't think that's going to happen. I think they will figure out a way to get to six wins and get to a bowl game. You better read Stanford. Not saying they're going to win the bowl game, but BYU will figure out a way to get to six wins and have at least a salvage title that's going to require some significant off-season work and maybe ultimately getting rid of the car and bringing in something else. Uh, but the rebuilt title feels like a stretch, right? It's been like this car has been in so many different accidents and has gone through so much significant damage in terms of a season. Like, it's going to be tough to get back to seven or eight wins. If BYU does that, then yeah, we're like, okay, we're, it's okay. Things are a little bit better, and there's some positive momentum moving forward on the highway toward the Big 12 next season. It feels like a reach. It feels like BYU is going to is probably going to be centered on a salvage title season. Um, so not great. Never going to be the same car. Yeah. But no. hoping that BYU no. can get to six, maybe seven wins with a bowl game win. 
This is tough. I, I think There's no way around it. To, to your analogy, I think after Oregon, that car was way more damaged than we thought. We didn't realize it at the time. Sure. Something happened to the car and the people in, in the car. Internally. Internally, against, Jared. Yes, there was internal bleeding, bruising, whatever, to continue the analogy. Yes, because against what, or Utah State and Wyoming, we were like, wait a minute. That's weird. Something was broken. So, so like, the car might look okay. scoring yeah. 40? Why are they scoring in the yeah. 20s? Like, yeah. what's going on? Maybe the body that, work looked okay, but indication. like the, the yeah. engine inside was like not right. Yeah. This like this team, this team, uh, you know, could have won the Notre Dame game still. Um, Arkansas, you're not going to win at home. Uh, Liberty is now ranked, by the way, 23rd. Good job. You did it, Liberty. Um, Every team East that Carolina, BYU has lost to, by the way, is either ranked or receiving votes. Yeah, and again, we all wanted this, right? The tough schedule. This is what this is what we wanted. Um, this it is felt what like it's going to be in the Big Twelve. And it felt like this was a ramp up, um, yeah, to the Big Twelve. I would argue if BYU is in the Big Twelve this year. They're three and six or worse. Like the Big Twelve's awesome this year. There's so many like top forty squads here. Mm. It's like ECU's good team. Uh, ECU's probably ninth through twelfth in the Big Twelve this year. Like th that's good ball. Will it be good ball next year? Oh, probably. We hope not. So BYU can go to a bowl game. Because next year, again, you go in, new year one in the league, and you start at make a bowl game. Because you go two and one in non-conference. Just Let's just call right now. That's how it's going to be. Beat Sam Houston in Southern Utah. And then you hope you lose at Arkansas. And then you hope you go four and five in league. And then you get six wins. That's the hope. Well, and again, when you look at what we BYU, want this, what BYU we want this can the big salvage field. in terms of what pieces they will actually bring back for next year's squad, that opens a whole other conversation. Yes, and I know there's a lot of people that are like, "Hey, we need to look at whether Kalani's still the guy here." Kalani's Stop still it. the guy. There's certain, certainly on defense, there need to be some adjustments, some changes to figure out the right situation. Again, we get real used to the continuity of like coaches that stay for a long time here at BYU, it's not common to have the same staff year over year over year, right? BYU said maybe uh, switch, like Kevin Clune joined a couple years ago. You switched with A-Rod and Mateos and Grimes with the Baylor. Like, the fa BYU's continuity on the coach staff has been tr pretty good the last couple of years. It's not common. Like, typically, assistants are going and, and coming and blah, blah, blah. I, I imagine that in the offseason, there'll be some, some tweaks there. Just naturally, because there was such high standard, BYU's going to make some adjustments at this point point. and if you're a head coach what you do is you switch coordinators and staff on on sides of the ball depending on the year to sort of offload uh, okay we got to do this we got to do this and then eventually it comes down on you like if BYU has three losing seasons in a row or something it's different this was this was one where maybe BYU is still going to salvage as you mentioned a winning season which would be great it would stink to have a losing record with this group oh my goodness like, no okay get that fifth win beat like, Stanford's the most winnable game now. Like, Boise State is a really tough game on Saturday. We'll break it down more throughout the week. That defense well, is, is only giving up, yes. uh, you know, 200-something yards a game. Not just that, the mentality, Jaron. BYU's lost four straight games still. They're still riding on that streak. It's, BYU's going to beat Utah Tech and yeah. have some type of positive momentum going to Stanford. Yes. That's and, a different mentality that BYU takes into Boise than they will into Stanford. Yes. Stan okay, yes. And Boise State, 12th in points allowed, 17 a game right now. Are you kidding me? Again, they haven't played a super tough schedule. Their big non-con game was Oregon State. And they got who's, hammered. Who's okay. Who was ranked. Yep. Hank Bachmeyer's not the guy anymore. They started 2-2. Two and two. They fired Tim Plow, the OC. Dirk Cutter, the ex-head coach there, is, is on staff. Can you remember... Can you imagine Bronco being an analyst on the staff and then suddenly he's the D.C. or something? That would be wild, right? I think some of you actually wanted that. Um, <laughs> ninth in, in third downs. Um, you know, they only gave up 170 yards to Colorado State, three rushing yards. Colorado State's week. historically bad. They are, they are terrible. Um, but the offense isn't crushing it for Boise State either. 360 a game. They have 11 giveaways. They're a really good second-half team, plus 80. So there, there are things there where I go, hey, if the BYU offense can somehow hang and, and put up some points against this Boise State defense, that Boise State offense not doing, not doing crazy stuff. Granted, BYU is really banged up on the defense side of the ball especially. So it's hard to, hard to feel confident going into Boise right now. But somehow, as you mentioned, in 2019, if BYU goes back to its slump-busting buddy, Boise State. And takes care of business. Two and four. Yep. They were ranked. Uh, no one's ranked in this matchup, certainly, but... It, it would be, it would, this would be the craziest, well, second craziest probably of 2019. 
win that BYU will have had against Boise State. And I don't know that BYU cares, and maybe Boise State cares. I don't know. Is This is the last matchup they'll have for a while. Maybe ever? I don't know that BYU is ever going to play Boise State. Like, why would you? A quality G5? You don't need that game, especially when you're trying to make a bowl game. Yeah, interesting game. This is, this is the one that uh, if BYU can put it together, this would be the biggest step in getting back to a rebuilt title. For sure, because yeah. if BYU loses be this huge game win. and they're four and six, and it's like okay, they limp into Utah Tech, handle that game, try and build something positive, and you go to Stanford. Like at that point, you've you've lost five games in a row, and the best you can do if you win out, including a bowl game, is seven and six. Like BYU would need a three-game win streak, including a bowl game win. To have a winning winning record record. to get to seven and six. Like, I don't expect BYU to win at Boise right now. Well, neither does anybody in Las Vegas. They're a seven and a half point underdog. I sure hope they do. That'd be awesome. That'd be a huge win. Um, And defensively, if BYU plays like it did on Saturday, they've got a chance. The offense needs to play a little better than it did on Saturday, finish another drive or two. Well, that's tough. A little more explosive. As you pointed out, Boise State has a markedly better defense than East Carolina does. Yes, they do. Now, I, I, yeah, yeah. The offense got to show up. I hope the the explosive BYU offense can be there. BYU's not been explosive mm. in its uh, in its losses. I believe the longest play. I looked this up. I believe the longest play is like 23 yards or or 30 yards or something. Like yeah. in 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 uh, in losses, BYU's not explosive whatsoever. Like the lo- longest play was 30 yards on Saturday. Now it's interesting you bring that up that it. word and that statistic. Because I talked to Jaron Hall about that yesterday. You'll hear that conversation I, later this week. I can't wait. Specifically on BYU's lack of explosive offense. I could just go watch it later, but I've decided not to. <laughs> All right, let's hear yeah. from you in Voice of the Nation. Our question of the day is this. Can BYU football salvage the season? Is there any way to do this? JT Lammer on Twitter says, just get to a bowl game. It won't really salvage preseason expectations, but it sure would feel better than missing a bowl game. Yeah, it feels like uh, 02, 03, 04 right now, where it's like, oh, we're in that, like, got to win two or three to make a bowl. Think think about this, and you said this yesterday. There's a chance if BYU doesn't go to a bowl game that Jaron Hall and Puka Nakua, those guys are not going to play at BYU again. Like, it would be a travesty. Be terrible. Travesty for Jaron and Puka not to be able to play in a bowl game Well, in their final seasons at BYU. And I'm going to be honest, given Jaron's uh, NFL draft status, will he even play in the bowl game? You know, like, he may opt out. Uh, and if that's become more and more of a I'm common I'm not saying theme, that's good or bad. I'm no, just saying way it more may common. happen. Sure, like, yeah. I don't, I, I don't want to risk it. Like, I wanna, like yeah. he could have played last year. And chose not to, I, right? I, I hate yeah. that we're here, but yeah. it's the reality. Yeah. It's the reality. Hashtag BYUSN to join the conversation. Just win. Just win it at oh, Boise be, State. Be Boise, Let's go. It would make so many things automatically yes, better. It'd be, it'd be better. Plus, it's Boise State. Let's yes. Go. Tomorrow, Jared Jacobs, we're coming for you. Tomorrow, BYU basketball hosts NAIA School Ottawa in the final exhibition before the regular season next week. Pre-game on BYU TV and BYU Radio, 8 Eastern time. And does ESPN's Trevor Maddich think BYU can in any way, shape, or form salvage the rest of their season beginning at Boise? He joins us next on BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Bodyguards, protection for a life worth living. Welcome to a partnership where customer experience comes first. It's our focus. It's your expectation. We provide support to those that go the extra mile for all of us. Supplying products, training, and service for generations. Learn more at BradyIndustries.com. BYU Food To Go's convenient location at 2191 North Canyon Road in Provo makes bringing popular BYU foods to your next event easy. Everything's ready when you need it at the drive and load pickup. You drive in and they load no matter the weather. And stop in the on-site creamery for great BYU chocolate milk and ice cream. BYU Food To Go, bringing campus to your table. Call for details, 801-422-5001.
BYU football with Kalani Satake and Greg Rubel. When I was younger, I was a better dancer. Don't show any more dancing on here. Okay, good. <laughs> I think we've developed some really good habits the last couple weeks and, and looking to step it up again. A lot of great things can happen when they care. Not bad. That's good stuff. Hey. Yeah. yeah, thank you for ending on that one. That was a good one. <laughs> Here's the more quarterback sacks, explosive plays for BYU football, and wins in November. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. We are live in Studio B alongside Jerem Jordan. I am Spencer Linton. It is our privilege now on a Tuesday to welcome an ESPN college football insider and expert, Trevor Maddich. Not for a Maddich Monday, but for a Maddich Tuesday. A Trevor Tuesday. Tom Homo took over with his Yoda costume yesterday, Tom, uh, Trevor, so we kind of pushed you today, but that's okay. We can't think of a better way to start off November, and in the spirit of Halloween and Mike Leach, what's your favorite candy to consume on Halloween as you get ready for November? Oh, it's candy corn. <laughs> there, there is no other. And for the haters of candy corn, what they need to do is just keep eating it until they learn to love it. Got it? <laughs> Sound like me with my daughter and, uh, you know, uh, cheese pizza. Or what? Eat the pepperoni, after all. Strong opinions already being shared on this show. Trevor, as BYU football moves into November, Kalani Satake said yesterday, new month, new week, new game, new opportunity. How does BYU begin to salvage this season, if they can at all? Well, there's too much of a burden from what's happened the last four weeks to try to think about that and think about correcting it. What they need to do is just wipe the slate clean and treat this game as if it's the last game they'll ever play, as if it is the Super Bowl. And that means not the game. That means preparation for the game. That means a fanatical urgency in practice to get ready. Nick, Samus, Nick Saban famously said that the will to win is not what matters. It's the will to prepare to win. And I've got to say that through all the injuries and all the things that have happened with this team, on tape too often it appears like the players weren't fanatically focused with urgency in practice. Now, in fairness, I wasn't at practice. I'm just saying what it looks like on tape. But they need to just wipe the slate clean, start this week as if this is the only week that will ever be in their football lives. Let's talk about injuries because certainly those have played uh, a big factor in what's happened this year. So we could just say, yeah, BYU's been injured. Uh, that's why. But then we go to, well, why is BYU being so injured? It feels like, and I even questioned Blaine Fowler last week on this, and he had some uh, you know, good research having talked to doctors as he is connected in the medical world and connected to Stanford and whatnot. feels like BYU is a little more banged up than the, the average team. So... Is there something you can do to prevent injuries? Is this return missionary soft tissue stuff? I know it's not all RMs per se, but it's certainly concerning that in a year like this that is comparable or closer to what BYU is going to start playing in the Big 12, that, hey, if BYU can't get through seasons without being overly injured, then they're going to have a tough time in the Big 12. There is a lot of data on this, and it is something that the, their medical staff and strength and conditioning staff and coaches need to make sure they're focused on. A lot of times injuries happen in freak fashion. Sometimes, like in the case of BYU, they're kind of playing above their recruiting level sometimes where they've got a whole bunch of power five schools all bunched up and then they don't recruit to that yet all the way. As BYU gets into the Big 12 and they get full recruiting cycles, then the depth will be such that they'll be able to deal with those injuries better. But it does happen when you're kind of punching above your weight class a little bit. They wouldn't want to say that, but it's kind of the truth. And so you need to make sure that there's a balance between how hard you go in practice, how hard you go in the weight room, and then how hard you want to play and stay, stay healthy on game day because you can overdo it in practice and in the weight room. I'm not saying that they are, but I'm saying that these are things that they have to watch out for. Trevor, against ECU, BYU was down arguably their four best defenders. Malik Moore at safety, their two best linebackers in Peyton Wilgar and Max Tooley, and then their best cover corner in D'Angelo Mandel. If the, it is a scenario where BYU has to go to Boise State with none of those guys, or maybe one or two even, how do they handle something like that when we're going up against Boise State in a place they have not played well? Well, it, the injuries are a thing. They're not an excuse, but it's important to acknowledge 
some of the limitations that occur because of that. Because when you've got enough guys injured, you can't really run a practice correctly. I mean, well, especially on defense where BYU has had trouble on game day with tackling, for example. If you wear guys out in practice because so many guys are sitting out practice, that makes it even worse on game day. And it also means that you can't practice as hard and as fast as you want to because you're running out of people and you don't want to wear them out. And so I, I, I remember talking to Lane Kiffin when he was head coach at USC. Now he's the head coach at Ole Miss. And it was during the, the Reggie Bush sanction years. And so they had limitations in scholarships from the NCAA. And Coach Kiffin was telling me how with those limitations and then injuries to the offensive line, they couldn't even run a proper practice because they didn't have enough offensive linemen. And that affected the entire team. Uh, a few years before that, I was at Florida when they had uh, a coaching change. And they said that in spring ball, they couldn't run practice because they didn't have enough scholarship or healthy offensive linemen. So Florida put out a call to campus for any guys that played high school or maybe junior college offensive line that still were in shape enough to come in and help them practice. And they got a bunch of guys just to help them practice off of campus. So it's, it's a thing when you've got so many uh, injuries that practice becomes difficult. But even so, the guys that are practicing need to have that fanatical focus and urgency on what they're doing. And it can't always be as physical as the coaches want it to be because you got to keep guys ready to play. But at the same time, that mental urgency at least needs to be there. And BYU too often has played like they didn't have the, the fanatical mental urgency in practice. Now, in fairness, I wasn't there, but I, I see what they look like on tape and that's what it looks like to me. So they can improve on that side of it. Having said all that, a lot of the problems that BYU has had, especially on defense, have started with not being in the right place, doing the right thing with the right technique. In other words, before they were engaged with an opponent, before any physical limitations came in, their pad level was too high. They got out of their gap. They didn't set an edge. And then when, like Mike Tyson has said, and we've talked about this, guys, that when everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. And when you're engaged now with the opponent, the opponent has something to say about it. But there have been too many times when BYU, especially on defense, has not started the play correctly, and that led to you know, football disasters as the play continued on. So injuries are important. They're a thing. We need to acknowledge that. That's not an excuse. But what that means is that fanatical focus on alignment assignment technique needs to be apparent from practice coming into the game at least before you engage with the opponent. Okay, let's ask you about uh, Boise State and then the new Big 12 deal here in the next couple of minutes that we have. Boise State started 2-2. Two and two. They fired Tim Plow, the OC. Dirk Cutter was an analyst on the staff, former head coach there. He is now the OC. Things have turned around. They've won four in a row. They've got uh, uh, an offense that doesn't put up a ton of points a game or yards, but their defense is top 12 in yards, points, and third downs. Do you feel like the BYU offense can go in there and challenge that very good Bronco defense? Well, it'll be tough because of injuries for BYU with wide receivers, running backs. And this is where, again, the offensive line, which is still deep and experienced and strong and talented and big, this is where the offensive line needs to take over. This is an offensive line game. And so to, to move the ball and to keep up, now it's for the big guys to show why they've gotten so many accolades coming into this season for being possibly one of the best offensive lines that BYU has ever had. They haven't played that way a lot of this season for various reasons. Now they have a chance to get that, that expectation back up to expectation. But on the defensive side, this is, this is a problem because Boise State, you know, they, they fired their offensive coordinator earlier in the season, their starting quarterback, then transferred out because he didn't like what was going on with that, and they got better. And what they've done is created a rushing attack, a downhill power rushing attack that now has, after a slow start, the Boise rushing attack third in the Mountain West and getting better. And for a banged-up BYU defense, that's a problem. Trevor, for BYU fans, I guess they don't have to focus on the four-game losing streak because the Sports Business Journal put out yesterday the details of the new TV deal with ESPN and Fox going into the Big 12 beginning in 2025, averaging out at about $31.67 million per school, upwards of $50 million when you throw in all the other things that factor in through the NCAA basketball tournament and college football playoff. I mean, point being, BYU is going to get a lot of money when they go into the Big 12. What do you think of that new deal and the figures involved now that BYU is going to participate in that and benefit from that? 
Yeah, well, people think of the benefit in terms of facilities, and BYU's facilities are nice, but that's what people think about when they think of all this new money's coming in. But more importantly, think about the the support staff that can be hired now. The top tier college football programs have entire departments that focus on just scouting. And they scour the nation looking for the kinds of high school and junior college players and the transfer portal that the coaches tell them they're looking for. The coaches give them the criteria. I want this quality and that quality and that quality. They go out and narrow it down. And then the coaches don't get involved until they actually get down to the last few players that they can then decide which ones they want to offer. Whereas if you don't have that kind of staff, the assistant coaches, the head coach are doing all of that work. And so you can hire big staffs to do that. You can hire big staffs of consultants because they don't count against the, the, coach limit there's a limit of how many actual coaches you can have on the field interacting with the players but you can have as many consultants as you can bring in and um, alabama famously brings in former head coaches there's all kind of, that are quality control coaches that help offload some of the busy work from uh, the coaching staff that's actually working with the players and allow them to focus more on actually developing players on and off the field and so these are things that the, the added revenue will allow BYU to expand. And that will, we talked about punching above your weight a little bit mm -hmm. in terms of schedule. That will help to put BYU up onto the level of the Power Five. It's not just the level of recruiting. It's not just facilities and things like that. It's also the support staff that offloads work from the coaches to allow them to be more effective at the job that the outside world thinks that they should be doing only, which is focusing on the players in football. Great insight from ESPN's Trevor Maddich. I hope you are consuming a huge bag of candy corn following a BYU-Boise State win on Saturday night. Let me put it this way. You, you, if you eat candy corn with your fingers, you can only get a few in your mouth. I eat it with a spoon, a big spoon. <laughs> like cereal. Eat candy corn correctly, people. <laughs> I love it, Trevor. Great to talk yeah, to you. I'll Thanks so that. much. That's not true. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. ESPN's Trevor. Candy Maddox. corn's the worst. Candy corn with a no, spoon. I am not a candy corn guy. You a candy corn guy? Have you had Nerds candy corn? No. It's really good. Well, I love Nerds, so maybe. I'm yeah. not a candy corn guy, well, but I like the Nerds candy you've corn. You've now changed candy corn, therefore it has a chance. <laughs> Coming up tonight on BYU Football's Clients, talking plenty of candy corn talk. Uh, uh, just kidding. 8.30 Eastern on the app. Lots of uh, lots of things to discuss. Uh, Lopini Cato in the film room. Deep Blue features former Bronco turned Cougar quarterback Cade Fennigan. Up next, one BYU athletic streak came to an end, and there's another streak we hope comes to an end. We'll discuss all of that next during the whip. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. If you're looking to build your brand awareness and increase market share as BYU moves into the Big 12, this is the place, BYU, BYU Athletics. Athletics. We can provide the tools you need to make sure your company is seen and heard. BYU Athletics is where you can align your products and services with loyal fans that cheer for our Cougars. And they can also help your business win. Learn more about what a partnership with BYU Athletics and your company will look like. After all, this is the place. Email sponsorship at byu.edu today. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork sells Ford vehicles, including the F-150, the pickup designed for work and play. Tim Daly Ford maintains a large inventory, providing more choices for selecting an F-150 with the power and engineering to carry and tow heavy loads. The F-150's design offers comfort, safety, and a range of options to choose from. Think Ford. Think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. Dexter & Dexter is a full-service law firm offering a wide range of legal services. Since 1995, we have helped more than 20,000 Utahns both to navigate life's challenges and to make the most of life's opportunities. From accidents to wills, from bankruptcy to business law, we are passionate about shouldering your burdens. To learn more about scheduling a no-obligation consultation, visit DexterLaw.com. Before I was a coach at BYU or before I was even a player, I was a BYU fan. 
We've got great energy as a team, but we have even better energy because of our fans, and it's absolutely magical. When you hear the crowd roar, that makes it more exciting, more of an adrenaline rush. The roar of the crowd, you can feel it on the floor, you can feel that energy, and it's unlike anywhere else in the country. BYU Sports, it's all about the fans. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. Interact with the show throughout the day. Get content. Follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and TikTok. He is Jerem Jordan. I am Spencer Linton. Let's whip it. Cougar Whip Around presented by Marisk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. We start the whip with a shocking stat of the day. Ooh. It's the BYU Sports Nation stat of the day. BYU defense hasn't recorded a sack in 19 quarters. What? Go back to the test. <laughs> yeah. What? I know. Shocking, right? Will this trend be broken at Boise Saturday? Okay, first of all, you're telling me BYU had zero sacks in the month of October. Yeah. BYU played sackless football in October, Spencer. Wow. No sacks in October. Um, BYU going to get a sack? Shoot. I don't, I, I don't think Boise State's going to give BYU an opportunity to do so. They'll probably get the ball out quickly. Uh, go with the heavy run game, power game. I just don't think there's going to be a ton of opportunity for BYU to get pressure on the quarterback. Taylor Green going down at least once. You think? Yes. I hope so. He, uh, yeah. He he. Uh, they're throwing for 180 again. It's not like they're chucking. Well, that's the thing. Like if you're not throwing. And he's a runner, so he's going to start to run. Boom. If you're not up. if you're not throwing a lot, there's John zero Nelson, opportunities to sack the quarterback. John Nelson second quarter. <laughs> I'll get I'll that, that, Nightmare I'll, Nelson. I'll be that specific. Yeah, I don't think yeah. so. I don't think it's going to happen this, this Saturday. They've only given up 12. BYU only 11 sacks left. Mm. New York Jets head coach Robert Sala said Zach Wilson, who's been sacked a lot more than that, has yeah, Sala's yeah. full faith and is starting against Buffalo this week and will start every game for the remainder of the season outside of injury. Do you believe Zach Wilson will start every remaining game? I hope so. He needs to play better, though, Spence. If they lose, uh, and they're going to lose to the Bills. The Bills are amazing. Like, anybody against the Bills right now, I'd take the Bills. No ma almost no matter where it's played. And probably the points. Is Zach Wilson needs to play better. Obviously, three picks were really tough. Uh, terrible throws last week. He could play better than this. Yeah, we've seen he him play to. better than this this season. Yes. Like, go back to the Pittsburgh game. Remember how... Oh, everybody in the media loves Zach Wilson after the Pittsburgh game. It's the clutch in the fourth quarter. The concern is, if you put the ball in Zach's hands, is he going to lose the game for you? Or do you need to just rush the ball? Brees Hall out is a big deal for them. Zach's got to win the Jets some games, and yeah. he certainly can do yes, it. Yes, I believe he's going to start the remainder of the season for the New York Jets. And frankly, his numbers in the fourth quarter have been really good. Like for the season. Like for, that's when he plays his best football, yeah. strangely. Well, last week was hollow numbers, though, because they were down two scores. Houston head coach Dana Holgerson said the Big 12 schedule is to be released in a couple of weeks. Will be eye-opening. What would be eye-opening about it? Uh, Texas and Oklahoma playing more road games than home games in Big 12 conference play. That would be eye-opening to me. What? That would they, say, well, you no, have to I'm play five like, you, you or have, four. Well, you have, that wouldn't be that crazy, right? Well, like, maybe it's sending a message like, uh, we're going to make sure. Don't that they probably do that every other year, though? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> can they, they give them? Can they maneuver it so that Texas and Oklahoma would have to play five road games the next two years? The next two? Now that'd be weird. That would be eye opening. Because you'd think that you alternate, right? That wouldn't be weird to me. Yes. No, I'm just saying, like, if, if they did that and, and made Texas and Oklahoma play five road games, that wouldn't be weird at all. To me. Like, I assume that they do that. Not every just year. for next year's. I'm saying, like, for the oh, next okay. two years. If if they made them play all nine games on the road, that would be <laughs> eye opening. I don't see what would be eye opening. I'm I'm anxious to see it. No divisions. Maybe some people think that's eye opening, but that kind of feels like old news. Like that's not going to have divisions, right? That's yeah. From the summer. Yeah. For the first time in 136 straight polls, BYU women's volleyball is ranked outside the top 17, all the way down at number 18. <laughs> What does it say about BYU volleyball? It says that even in, when BYU is quote unquote down, which they're not, they're still in the top still, 20. Seriously, when was the last time like, they're not ranked? 2012? This team st should still make the NCAA tournament. But the key is, well, can Abby Taylor continue to play the way she played last week and help BYU still get into the tournament? Because they have to play at LMU, at Pepperdine, San Diego at home, who's up to two now. Wow. Beat San Diego in Provo. Then you'll definitely be back in the top 17. That, that's, that is <laughs> no, the, they'll be there next week. That, that after is after beating the, San Francisco and Santa Clara. Is the way they'll be there next week. A twist in the ongoing Stanford tree drama. Now being reported that it was the decision of the Stanford marching band what? to suspend Tree 44. They're like presidents of the United States, apparently. Okay. Due to the violation of band policies and procedures, Tree 43 tweeted the following: <laughs> "Hey yo, 
previous tree, number 43 here, some of y'all have been asking, so I'll clarify that the LSJUMB, which stands for Leland Stanford Junior University Marching Band, by the way, leadership reached this decision as per established band policy, but don't worry, I'll be coming out of retirement until number 44 returns in the winter. Wow, number 43 back is Would, the tree. Could the power of the Wasatch, AKA the BYU Marching Band, ever suspend Cosmo? No, no, Cosmo has too much power. Way too much power. He could suspend the band, frankly. He'd be like, nope, you're not playing well enough. You're not coming to the games. <laughs> it would Cosmo, be the other way around. Cosmo is not attached to the band like no, the tree is. Right? No, Cosmo could suspend the band, though. The tree is the freaking weird. Let's be honest. <laughs> okay, if you missed Coordinator's Corner, get up to date on all shows and games, BYU TV on BYUSN.com. Up next... BYU Sports Nation game day analyst, football insider, former NFL guy, David Nixon tells us if the tape shows if BYU's defense did indeed do enough against ECU to win that game and what he expects from the Cougars on defense at Boise State. This is BYU Sports Nation. David. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Accidents don't just happen nine to five, they happen when you least expect them. The team at Siegfried and Jensen is here for you 24 seven, nights, weekends, every day, every hour, really here for you. No matter when you call us, you'll speak to a real person and have access to the same expertise and personal attention as always, and get the legal help you need when you need it. Nights, weekends, every day, every hour, 24 seven. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. Trio Orem Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life when you live at Trio. Less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TrioOrem.com. Let's kick off AFR on BYU TV. What they did in that fourth quarter was not unexpected in my book. Everyone did their job perfectly, and it resulted in obviously a touchdown. Who knew that he had these kind of hands? And right at the snap of the football, they both go right downhill. And, and that was the end of that. <laughs> he, did, he, he knocked him down pretty quickly. Sports Station live in Dave, the Dave, studio bizzle. Get out of the shop, man. <laughs> and with that, <laughs> we welcome all of you back and David Nixon <laughs> into frame. David, David, I'm here leading. On to the show. Hey, we're running right, 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 a right, TV right, show. Right, this is the back. I was just hanging out down here. I was like, I probably should sit up a little bit. Next thing I know, my head's Can we replay the shot. That? <laughs> so that was good. We never replay on BYUSN, but we actually have something to replay. Right, are we back from commercial break yet? Oh, we're back? Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. David, welcome to the show. Hey, and I know you're excited. You're, you're moving your body and, and getting amped up because you got a lot to talk about. I got it's, a, it's a big day for you today. Um, it's based a lot in frustration, but yeah. we did see BYU football play better against ECU than certainly they had in previous weeks. And our first question is kind of centered on that. Did BYU's defense do enough to win the game against ECU? No, they didn't. I, and here's the thing. I, I think we I'm, disagree. I, I think on both sides of the ball, Nobody's doing enough right now to win games, obviously, right? Yeah, BYU's sure. losing. And sure. so I think that you're, you're at the point of the season where you can't rely on the other side to go out there and win you games. Like defense, you have to go in the game into the mindset of we have to shut this team out. We're on a, we're on a three game, now four game losing streak. We have got to find a way to, to win this game 20 to nothing or seven to nothing. I get that mindset, but it's not realistic. I mean, it's realistic in the sense that you can limit to 10 points. I mean, you, okay. I, I'm just saying you've got Is to have the mindset. You've got to. 
uh, yeah, I, I don't see why it's not. 24 was fair to me, David. When you go back and watch this film, which I have, and you watch the guys, we had dudes in the right spots. We had the right schemes dialed up. And there were lots of plays where guys actually did a great job of balling up ECU's running back. I mean, but there are also a lot of plays where literally one or two guys are just like two feet too far inside and get blocked and the, and the running back's out the gates. And, and that's the problem right now with this team is you have 10, sometimes nine guys doing their jobs and you have two that are, that are in their completely wrong gaps. And good teams exploit that. Mm. And they find that gap and they gas you. And that's what happened time and time again against ECU. Backers falling too far inside, and boom, the running back out the gates, right? And, and we knew going into this game that this, the running back for ECU loved to bounce it. That was like his whole thing. He loved Keaton it. Keaton Mitchell. He, he, Keaton Mitchell, he didn't like to go up in the middle. He would initially start up the middle, but every single time he liked to bounce it. And, and so BYU, there are a couple of times where BYU's backers and safeties come folding inside to a place where that's not your job. That's not your job to fold inside because you have to be out there for the bounce. And sure enough, he bounced it, and they were they had folded inside too much, and uh, he gashed them. And that that's the frustrating part. You watch, you're like, man, this team is so close. And, and I think that's the hope I have for them going to Boise State and hopefully finish out the season is they're so close to being able to play good football. But right now, it's not good football. And and I, I know they're watching film and realizing that. And week in and week out, they're 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 being reminded of that. Um, but you got to fix it. I mean, it, this isn't basketball where you have 30 games to fix it, right? This is, like, it's, this is week by week, you have 12. And, and this season, it might only be 12. It might not be 13. And so you got to fix it. It's tough. Uh, and I felt like uh, the offense probably had one more score in them that didn't happen. Maybe that was at the beginning of the fourth when they passed up a 29-yard field goal to 12, didn't get the first. But after the last three weeks, I felt like, listen, 24 points until that last field goal, that felt like it was good enough. But everybody's got to play better. Ryan Rico uh, blasted a 71-yard punt down to the one. Like, that was, that was enough, right? Jake Olderoyd made his field goal. That was enough. Um, so this week against Boise State, great defense from the Broncos. They haven't played the toughest schedule in the world, but they're not giving up uh, you know, a lot of points, yards, third downs, 28%. Like, do you feel like the BYU offense can get some yards uh, perhaps on the ground? Can Lopini Katoa have a similar game to open things up and maybe BYU's got a chance here? I, I say yes because we've seen, you know, glimpses of brilliance from this offense too this year where, I mean, USF, they go out there and they dominate. Every, everything they were doing uh, worked well, right? And, and the whole team was on the same page. And, and so I, I think this whole team, they, when they put it, the whole game together, which we haven't seen for a really long time, we haven't seen the offense, the defense, and special teams all click together. What was the whole, have we had a whole game? Because USF, USF was the first USF. USF was the first quarter, I would well, and, and saying, like, there, let's qualify that. USF is the worst team that BYU's played all year. They're worse than Utah State and Wyoming. They're bad. So there, there's something to that. Yeah. Okay? 100%. And so, so to your point, I, I don't know if they have played a complete game. I mean, you look at USF because of the score and how they routed them. Uh, but even against Utah State, Wyoming, even though BYU won those games, I think everybody Wasn't left enough. those games feeling a little uneasy about yeah. the way that they both both teams dominate BYU in time possession, moved the ball, third, converted on third downs on defense. Ran the ball specifically. Offensively, BYU struggled in certain spurts, and they weren't super clean. And so it's just been a weird season. We, we, we know they have the talent, and, and we've seen them seen it on display in years past, and we've seen parts of this season where – the offense goes out, 92-yard drive, and, and punches in for a touchdown, right? It's like – The longest drive of the season on we, Friday. We, exactly. Last week, we like, we know BYU has this in the bag. We just need some consistency from this team. And same thing with defense. You go back and watch the film, it's like, wow, BYU gets a couple three and outs. They do a great job getting the backfield, a, a great surge and push, and they, and they stuff ECU's running game. But then the next possession, they come out, and a guy folds inside, and they gash it for 20, 30 yards. A, a DB gets his eyes, dirty eyes, gets his eyes in the backfield, and boom, a, a 40, 50-yard pass, right? And so it's like it's just too much up and down right now, and I think that's what this team is, is, is struggling with and they're frustrated with is, is lack of consistency. And, and, and when that starts to happen as a, as a team, specifically as a defense, you, you lose confidence because you're thinking, okay, when you walk on the field – is this the team that's going to get a three and out? This defense is going to get a three and out? Or are we going to get gassed for, you know, 75, 80, 90, 90 yards, right? You just don't know what team you're getting. And, and we think of that as fans, but you also think that as players. And it's, it's a dangerous thought because when that creeps in your mind, once again, then you start playing outside yourself and trying to do too much. And in return, you actually hurt the defense as a whole. 
Which side of the ball needs to play better against Boise State, or I should say with more urgency? Like, which, which is carrying more of the weight this week as BYU goes up to the blue in Boise? Listen, I, I tend to harp on the defense because I'm a defensive guy, and I, I can see the glaring mistakes that are going on there. Um, but offensively, you've got the weapons, and, and, and I, I, I would love to see this offense 24 points. As you mentioned, felt like it should be enough, but in this day and age, you got to put up more points. Get I mean, 30 at home. Yeah, it's 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 the it's just how the game is, right? That's how the game is played. And we've talked about this on AFR and elsewhere. Look at what's happening in the SEC. You've got 55 to 52, you know, shootouts going on. Big 12, right? This is this is the future of BYU football going to the Big 12. You're going to have to be involved in some shootouts, and so offense, you need to you know you need to get ready and for for what's to come, and you've got to put up more points, no question. Um, but at the same time, defensively, we've seen games where the, the opposing team, uh, you know, just drags on with the clock and the defense can't get off the field to give the ball back to Jaron in the offense, right? And so, uh, 100%, it's, it's, it's both sides. There, there's no glaring, hey, it's, this season is this, this, you know, side's fault, right? I mean, you go game by game, and it's usually one of the, one of, one of either the unit of offense or defense is struggling, and you can point your finger at them, and that's where, once again, Billy's got to have a complete game. And this is the week to do it. You're going up to Boise. I mean, let me back up. There's not much to play. Left. There's not much more to play for this season. Let's be honest, right? All your goals are out the door. There's no way, even if you went out from here, you're getting a top 25. I don't think it's no, you know, no way. No, you're just so, trying to salvage something positive. Get, a, so, get to a bowl game. So the, you, you want to get to a bowl game and get beat your record. rivals, right? Beat your rival, and that's what Boise State is this week. And of course, Stanford, the last game of the year, beat a P5 school. That's another check mark, right? But this week is beat your rival. Who knows when BYU will play them again? Maybe never. Maybe never. And so this is an opportunity to go up to the Smurf turf, beat them on their home they turf. They love it when you call that. So well done. Believe me. I, I, I did that for a reason. <laughs> and, and beat them on, on their home field. And, and that's, uh, that's kind of a minor, it's a little victory, right? Yeah. A moral victory. A It'd be victory. a big victory. Yeah, it could be a big victory. It's something Second you can take. This team that struggled so much this year, this would be huge for their confidence and something they can hang their hat on. And then, once again, the, the whole hope now with, with, with what's what gone on, is you're trying to take some momentum into Big 12. Yes, that's, that's, yes. That's all that you're, you're focused on right now is trying right to now. take the momentum in. Yep. All right, after further review, much more to come tonight. 7 Eastern on the BYU TV app. Check it out. David saved his best opinions for that show <laughs> later. If you thought that was good, just wait tonight on the BYU TV app, 7 Eastern. And you know what? We're going to build some momentum of our own for this show. David, just lean in. We lean reminisce in we on go. better times. <laughs> With the top five wins during last year's No Lost November. I remember November. that. That was fun. Remember No Lost November? Yeah. Top five Tuesday up next on BYU Sports Nation. It ended early in December. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Introducing the Truck for Adventure. The all-new 2022 Nissan Frontier doesn't compromise on power or comfort. This mid-sized truck was redesigned to incorporate the latest technology and designs for safety, comfort, and convenience. Plus, with up to 6,700 pounds of towing capacity and best-in-class horsepower, it's rugged enough for adventure and still safe enough to transport all your favorite people. Where's your new Frontier? You'll find it at Tim Dowling Nissan Southtown in South Jordan. I was four years old when I left Zambia. My dad was born in Shila in the south of Italy. My mom is from Slovakia. We haven't really talked about it, never, not once. My dad doesn't really talk about his life in Serbia. I just really want to know who he is. And then discover who am I. <laughs> Wow.
Wow, you're good. <laughs> Everyone says that. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Nation is on demand. Download the free BYU TV and BYU Radio apps and subscribe, rate, and review the pod. We have reached that time. Top 5 Tuesday on the docket. And because today is November 1st, we thought, what a perfect time to look back at the best wins during last year's No Loss November. It was awesome, man. Number 5, BYU went to Portland and men's hoops, beat up on number 12, Oregon, 81-49. First time an unranked team beat a top 15 team by 30 or more away from home since 93. Ooh. That was I love stats, but that was complicated. Alex Barcelo led the way with 25 points. That was the high mark of last year. It's not the first shout-out to 1993 in this top five mm. uh, rundown. Number four, BYU women's volleyball beat San Diego in the regular season finale to go 18-0 in West Coast Conference play. 28-1 <clears throat> in the regular season. The first time since 1993 that BYU women's volleyball team had won all 18 regular season conference games and secured the West Coast Conference title. Number three, football ends the regular season with the 35-31 win at USC to solidify the Pac-12 South title. Remember that? Oh, I remember. And a 10-win season led by 111 yards by Tyler Algier. Jackson McChesney scored the game winner. McChesney's been hurt this year. Otherwise, he would have had some carries. At number two, BYU women's soccer beat South Carolina 4-1 to to advance to their first ever college cup. The Cougars Cougars scored three minutes into each half, outshot South Carolina 26 to 5. BYU would head to the College Cup in Santa Clara the following week, take down the Broncos in a PK shootout and play in their first ever national championship match. And at number one, BYU cross country national champions Connor Mance and Whitney Orton. Mance set a personal record, uh, second straight individual title. Orton brought home BYU's first individual NCAA women's cross country national championship. Our question of the day is this. Can BYU football salvage the season in any way? Our elite voice of the day presented by PAX Healthcare Elevated comes from at 3M Mickey and says uh, simply, yes, I pray they do. I'm just hoping for wins, not even how BYU plays. Like if BYU wins and plays great. Eight and five, baby. It's, it's gonna, it'd feel really good. But no. Ugh. Today's Rise and Shout Out presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. To a more comfortable Marriott Center, the capacity is down to 17,978 after they have eliminated some benches. I still need clarification on if there's any benches sure, there. Sure, sure, sure. But uh, it's all blue, no tan, and that we can rise and shout out to BYU and Ottawa exhibition tomorrow night in men's hoops. Oh, we need to get blue goggles for every one of those blue seats. Let's go. <laughs> That's a lot. Let's go. All right, thanks we already got them, the invisible packs. Trevor Maddox and David Nixon. Sorry to Dennis Pitta, we ran out of time. Check out this and all of our shows on BYUSN.com. For Jeremiah Spencer, and a shout out to Bart Oates. We'll see you on After Further Review at 7 Eastern, followed by BYU Football with Kalani Satake later tonight. Busy day on BYU TV Sports. Go Cougs.